Now let us consider some interesting examples of application of Cauchy Riemann conditions. But just to see that they do work, let's study the example of a simplest possible function. Like function f of z equals z squared. Its real part, u of x and y, is equal to x squared minus y squared, while its imaginary part is equal to 2xy. So let's check. du over dx is equal to 2x, while dv over dy is equal to 2x, and indeed they're equal. du over dy is equal to minus 2y, while dv over dx is equal to 2y, and indeed du over dy is equal to minus dv over dx. So everything seems fine. Now let us consider somewhat maybe less trivial example. What if only the real part of the function is given to us? For example, the function x cubed plus 6x squared y plus minus 3xy squared and minus 2y cubed. It turns out that the cauchy riemann conditions are so powerful that they allow to restore the imaginary part of the function given its real part up to some additive constant. So we impose an additional condition that f of 0 is equal to 0. And of course, if an imaginary part is restored, then the full analytical structure of the function is restored. So basically, in complex analysis, the function can be almost uniquely defined by just its real part or imaginary part. So let's see how it is done. We have our u function, so let us write down the first cauchy riemann condition. du over dx is equal to 3x squared plus 12xy minus 3y squared and is equal to dv over dy. Now let us restore v and integrate the left-hand side with respect to y. We obtain v is equal to 3x squared y plus 6xy squared minus y cubed plus some arbitrary function psi of x. Now to obtain our psi function, let's use the second cauchy riemann condition. dv over dx is equal to 6xy plus 6y squared plus psi prime of x. And it should be equal to minus du over dy, which is minus 6x squared plus 6xy and plus 6y squared. We see that all y-dependent terms in the right-hand side and left-hand side of this equation cancel out, which make the whole expression consistent. And now we integrate it with respect to x. This way psi of x is equal to minus 2x cubed plus some constant. And we see that we just restored the imaginary part of our function up to some additive constant. v is equal to 3x squared y plus 6xy squared minus y cubed minus 2x cubed plus some constant. And this constant is equal to 0 due to our initial condition f of 0 should be equal to 0. So our analytical function is fully restored. And you may wonder what it looks like as a function of z. Well, you can always find it using the substitute x equals z plus z complex conjugate over 2 and y is equal to z minus z complex conjugate over 2i. But in this particular case, you may guess the appearance of your analytic function just combining different terms in u and y. For example, combining x cubed and minus 3xy squared in u function and 3x squared y and minus i cubed in v function, we see that u plus iv can be organized into x plus iy cubed. And now you can factor out minus 2i from the rest of the terms. And you will immediately notice that the rest of the terms are again organized into x plus iy cubed. So in the end, our analytic function can be recast as z cubed times 1 minus 2i. So let us consider the next example. And this is going to be slightly different because now only the modulus of the function is given to us and we are asked to restore the full analytic function. So modulus of f is equal to e to r squared times cosine of 2 phi. So we see that this assignment is even more unusual because the dependence of our modulus function is expressed via polar coordinates. So how would we proceed? Initially, cauchy riemann conditions are not written for the modulus and the argument of the function. They are written for its real and imaginary parts. And the key consideration here is to study the logarithm of our function rather than the function itself. Because if our function is analytic, then its log is also analytic. So let us introduce a new function, w, which is equal to the logarithm of f. Now let us represent our f function 
as the modulus of f times e to i the argument of f. Then the log can be expanded as the log of the modulus of f plus i times the argument of f. So we see that the real part of our new analytic function w is in fact the logarithm of the modulus of the old function, while its imaginary part is the argument of the old function. And this way our first step would be to take a logarithm of our initial modulus of f. Let's denote it as u. And it's simply equal to r squared times cosine 2 phi. And now let's return to our Cartesian coordinates. So what we do, we use the doubling formula for the cosine f to phi. Cosine squared of phi minus sine squared of phi. And we see that it can be represented as x squared minus y squared. That's our u function. And now let's employ cauchy riemann conditions to find the imaginary part of our w function. du over dx is equal to 2x. It should be equal to dv over dy. And this way, v function is equal to 2xy plus some obligatory function psi of x. Now the second Riemann condition. dv over dx, which is 2y plus psi prime of x, is equal to minus du over dy which is 2y. So we see that psi prime of x is equal to 0, and as a result, psi of x is some constant, c. And this way we restored our v function, which is nothing but 2xy plus some constant. Therefore, the full structure of w function is also restored. It's equal to x squared minus y squared plus 2xyi plus ic. And we see that the first three terms can be organized into x plus i y squared. And recalling that our w function is nothing but the logarithm of our original function, we obtain the expression for our original function f up to some multiplicative constant. f of z is equal to e to z squared times e to i c. And this way you see that indeed cauchy riemann conditions are quite powerful. They sometimes allow us to restore the full function from its real part or even from its modulus up to some multiplicative constant. And you'll find some more exercises in your homework. Our next video will be dedicated to one more interesting application of complex functions, namely the simplest conformal mappings. Mm -hmm.